Hi everybody, welcome to our Custom Transfers Q&A with the Experts webinar today. Uh, we're all glad you could join us. Um, today we have with us Andy Curtis, uh, who is a part of our dealer services team for 10 years, and he can answer your questions uh, about ordering, pricing, marketing, and application. My name is George Ann Schilling. I've been with the company 18 years. I can answer your questions about custom artwork, easy prints, the idea book, uh, marketing questions, all kinds of things like that. We also have joining us today Mary Ellen Pavlak, who is our digital print manager and has been with the company 17 years. And she can help you with questions about preparing artwork for custom specialty items like custom stickers, wall graphics, window cleans, CAD prints, digital transfers, and any artwork questions as well. So um, we're glad you joined us and if you on your little window there you should see an area for questions. Start typing your questions in there and we'll get going. And we're glad you all joined us today. Alright, let's check out the questions. Um, here's one for you Mary Ellen. Um, I do not have an art program, but I really need a banner. Can you help? Sure. Um, you can start by going to our website or our catalog if you want to look through our um, large amount of layouts and clip arts. You can browse through those and see if there's something um, that we might have that might interest you. Um, at the same time, if you find something that needs changed or you have something completely else that you just have in mind, you're welcome to send that to us as well. Um, you can send uploads to us through our website and um, cut, we can discuss that with a rep and we can make any changes that you need to um, and go from there. Cool. Great. Oh, here's another one for you, Mary Ellen. Should static cleans go on the inside or the outside of a window? The static cleans that we provide can actually go on either side of the window. Um, the only thing is that if they're on the outside, they might not stand up to the elements, um, depending on what climate you're in, rain, wind. The colors wouldn't fade whether it's on the inside or the outside. It's just basically the weather elements that, you know, probably won't weather so well on the outside. So you can apply it to either side. If you have like an interior window, um, it can go on either side of that, so. Okay, great. Let's see what else I have here. Um, I'm sorry for the delay. Let me see. Andy here, a lot of people have confusion with gang sheets. Could you describe what a gang sheet is for us? Certainly. Uh, gang sheet is the idea that we're taking our sheet of paper uh, for the screen printed product. That paper is 11 and a quarter by 14 and we're filling that sheet with more than just one image. Um, after all, if your image is, let's say, three inches by three inches or four inches by four inches, that's a very small image for a very large sheet of paper, 11 by 14. So the gang sheet is when we take that image and we put more than just one on that whole sheet. Now, your gang sheet can be as involved as you want it to be. If you have a whole series of pieces of artwork, you could gang all of those smaller pieces of artwork on one sheet. It doesn't have to be the same image over and over again. Um, you could do uh, several different images. Um, to that effect, we have uh, what we call head-to-toe gang sheets here at Transfer Express, where we've got uh, one sheet of paper crammed with uh, a leg print and a full-size print and a heart print and uh, all those things. So a gang sheet is when you're filling a sheet with all those different pieces. Awesome. Okay. Um, here's another one. Um, this one's from Jim, and he says, I have to sell out my screen printing when a customer wants screen printing done. How do screen printing transfers compare to regular screen printing? Can I expect the same results? And that one's probably for you, Andy. Yeah. Um, the best way to put it, the, the simple answer to that, Jim, is yes. Uh, the results are exactly the same. Uh, we are using the same inks that a screen printer uses. It is Plastisol ink. Uh, and the truth of it is we're doing the same thing that a screen printer does. Uh, the only difference is it's going on to a piece of paper. It's sort of taking a detour onto a piece of release paper. Uh, we're burning the same screens. We're using the same inks. We're doing the same thing that you folks are doing, uh, you screen printers out there. So um, the end result is a product that lasts life of the garment just like screen print would. 
Um, so it's the same pros and cons of screen print too then keep in mind. If you blast it in the dryer every day for a week, it's eventually going to get to the point where it dries out and cracks. Um, if you launder it inside out on the gentle cycle, you'll uh, extend the life of the garment and the life of the screen printing. So um, in terms of uh, care and laundering and all that, it's you treat it exactly the way that you would treat the screen print. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we, we love to promote our screen printing transfers. They're just as durable, and, and that's what we tell our customers, too, that when you're selling to your customers, don't tell them they're transfers. It's screen printing. It's the same. Market it the same way as you do your regular screen printing. They don't need to know it comes from a transfer. In the end, when you got the garment, they don't need to know how, how it was made. All right, Jordan let's, brings up yes. a good point there, actually. Plenty of our customers do market it that way. You don't even don't even bother telling the the people that you're providing to, don't even bother telling them it's a transfer. A tr the word transfer has a connotation that is a little outdated in our industry, but um, the word transfer just has, has this bad connotation that people think of. And in, in the end, the product that we're giving you is screen printing, and that's that's how it should be treated. So don't even don't even say the word transfer to the, to the customer and the end user. Right. Okay, here's a good one from John. Um, Andy, can you explain the difference between the three main standard Plastisol ink formulas? Give them the quick overview of that. Oh, yeah, actually, that's a good question. Um, there are the three standard ink types are goof proof, polytrans, and hot split. Uh, and the way to look at this is goof proof and polytrans, uh, those two are, are exactly the same product. Goof proof and polytrans are literally exactly the same thing. The only difference between them is the time and temperature that you're applying them at. Uh, literally, uh, our production process for goof proof and polytrans, it's the same inks, same powders, same everything. It's just the time and temperature that makes the difference. Now, hot split is a different breed of animal totally. Goof proof and polytrans, when you apply them, they sit, uh, they bind to the surface of the garment. So when you apply a goof proof and a polytrans, they're a little bit thicker, they're a little bit heavier, they're stuck to the surface of the garment. The hot split, when you press it, it liquefies and it soaks into the fibers of the garment. So the hot split, you end up with a transfer that's a little bit softer feel. It's uh, more melted into the fibers of the garment, so it's not as present on the top. You can feel a, a difference to where the goof proof and the polytrans is a little bit thicker. Um, so hot split is something you would go with if you're looking for a soft feel. Goof proof is our old standby, where if you're looking for something fast, goof proof applies at three seconds or four seconds at 365 degrees. And then polytrans is uh, an appeal to you if you have a garment that's heat sensitive. Polytrans applies at the lower 340 degree point, so that's where the polytrans would come into play. Okay, great, Andy. That was helpful. Uh, let's see what we got here. Um, another question from Susan. We are wanting to heat press our logo and website name inside the neck of shirts. What type of transfer should we order? Um, well, I can take that one. Um, the, the catch to that, Susan, is it totally depends on what you're wanting to put in the shirt. Um, if it's just simple text and there's no company logo involved, if you're keeping it simple, which is really what you should do for shirt tags is to keep it simple, um, then the screen printing product may work. Uh, if your logo or whatever you're doing on the inside of the shirt, if it is more involved, then the CAD print product might be the direction you want to go. It sort of depends on what you're trying to do. Uh, your best course of action, Susan, would be to upload the artwork to us or fax the artwork to us, get it in our hands so we can see exactly what it is you're trying to do and then the reps can direct you from there. But um, the rule of thumb is if you are keeping it simple, screen print works. If it's involved, you've got a logo, then maybe you want to go cat print. Okay. Um, let's see what else I have in our list. Um, this one's kind of a general question. This is probably still for you, Andy, as well. It's a little off topic, but I think we can help them get in the right direction. Um, it's from India, and they want to know, do you think it is more effective to use vinyl heat transfers when you're testing items to show how well they do or if, if you are on a limited budget? Um. To be completely honest, I, I'm not 100% following that question. Can you read that one more Well, I, th I think they're trying to ask if 
um, if you have a, a, a small budget, whatever, should you do the onesie twosie vinyl transfers or are low uh, minimums better for us? I mean, that's kind of the option of which way to go. Either one kind of depends on the volume probably of how many you're going to print probably. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those where if, if you're if you're giving us the way I see it is if you're doing a sample for somebody, then it, it's not helpful to do that sample in a in a different process than what the final product would be in. Um, I, if you're looking for a sample, I guess the question that arises is what exactly are you looking for a sample of? If it's if you're looking for a sample of the screen printed product, like you actually want to press one ahead of time, then your only choice would be to order the minimum quantity of the screen printed product. If you're concerned about the artwork, if that's the, the thing that's sort of driving this decision, um, then for artwork you can get a proof. Uh, you can pay for a proof of it where we would do up the artwork and then email it to you. Um, if you are doing the digital product, then getting a sample of the digital product is actually much easier because the minimum is is cheaper of the digital product. So um, it, it is possible to get uh, a cost-effective sample of digital because the minimum is $25. So if CAD prints is the way you're going, then it would be 25 bucks to get the minimum order of that for samples. Okay, great. And those are some good tips. Okay. And would it be true also that if um, you wanted to receive a sample of like not necessarily that artwork or that design, but you want to see the feel of the groove proof versus the hot split, um, you can also let us know and we can send a sample. It wouldn't be your design, but if you if you just want to have like let the customer feel the product, that's another option to go, and then you could do the proof to actually see what the artwork would look like. Yep. Yes, if we'll, for anybody that uh, is attending the webinar today and you're not in our system, you will get a sample pack. We'll make sure we send out a sample pack to you. You'll get a, a sample of each transfer to give it a try. So, because we have all your information, we'll mail it out to you. And you'll also get a catalog, our catalog, I believe. Okay, let's see. Let's see the next one. Um, what transfer formula is suggested for poly performance t-shirts and hoodies? He says he's been using vinyl but the, time, the temperature and pressure tends to leave the ring on the black garments. Do you have recommendations for that? Um, so the, the first thing that comes to my mind when I hear that question is that if you've got a ring being left on the garment, then obviously you've got a garment that's heat sensitive. So my first thought is our ElastiPrint product. Um, our ElastiPrint product is pressed at only 275 degrees. So as long as whatever whatever garment you're using, performance wear, I know it's a very general term, but whatever per particular performance wear you're using, if that performance wear holds up at 275, I would literally just take one of those garments and hit it in your press at 275 for just a minute and see what it does. As long as it doesn't leave any marks or anything, um, the elastic print is 275 degrees, or uh, if your artwork is more involved, the digital product presses at 305 degrees, um, you could always test that out and hit your garment at 305 uh, for a couple seconds and see if that leaves any marks. Um, the, both the uh, CAD print opaque product and the elastic print product are stretchy enough to hold up on that performance wear and uh, would last very well over time. So. Okay. Um... Here's one for me, actually, from John. What's the difference between Easy Prints and Easy Prints Plus? Easy Prints is anything that's ordered out of our Transfer Express idea book. So the, all the transfers shown on the slide right here with the screen printed, these are all layouts from our Easy Prints idea book. All the text can be changed, but, are, but you have to choose from our type styles, you have to choose from our clip arts, and all, all that. So where you can still customize your hard contents, you just have to use pieces that all belong to our idea book collection text and clip art and artwork but if you decide you want to make your own artwork and do you have your own art program and you want to make it and customize however do a gang sheet whatever art you want to make that's an easy print plus anytime it's your artwork easy print plus if it's our artwork it's easy print and easy print plus are slightly higher in price it's the basics of that what else do i have here um Let's see. Okay, Andy, if you can start to pull up the website, and I'm going to change the presenter over to you. The question is, I recently bought a 16 by 16 key press. 
what's a good website I can upload my designs basically I think we need to show them the upload area but then it's saying any image copyright or not and you could probably talk about copyrights as well yeah sure okay I'll switch, the, switch, switch it to you yep there we go Everybody should see my screen here. Uh, I've got the website brought up. So if you're looking to upload artwork to us, um, the website we're at right now, this is just transferexpress.com. This is the home page that we're looking at. So what we're going to do is right at the very top of the home page, you might notice this brown button. It's got a little computer on it. The button says, send us your artwork. This is the link you're going to click to get to the upload section of the website. So you notice once I click there, I see three boxes. I see I am a Transfer Express dealer, I see I am new to Transfer Express, and I see I am not a dealer, but I am returning to the upload area. Um, you would click on whichever one of these is pertinent to yourself. So if you are a dealer, you would click on this first one, and you would use your dealer ID and password to log in. If you are brand spanking new and you've never been to this website, you've never been to the upload site before, you would click on the middle one where you would enter your email address and get a temporary password. If you are not a dealer but you have done this before already and you've already got your temporary password, you would click on this very last one on the right hand side. Um, uploading is incredibly easy uh, when you do go to upload after you've gotten your login information. Um, it's incredibly easy. What we do is we ask you just a handful of questions about your artwork and there's always the choice of uh, selecting unknown as you're doing the upload if you really don't know the answers to the questions we're asking. So. Um, that is uh, very quick and simple. Uploads are very easy to do, I promise. Um, the other half of that question about copyrights and such, uh, the rule of thumb is that we do have to follow copyright laws here. Uh, if you upload a, an image that is copywritten, uh, we do have to ensure that you have the proper permissions. Um, this is incredibly pertinent right now, especially because of sports and all that kind of stuff with the different uh, football championship games and that kind of stuff going on right now. Um, there are uh, strict rules that we do have to follow, so if you do uh, have that type of artwork, we do require you to send us the letters of permission from the various uh, different organizations that they make might come from. So have that kind of thing ready when you're uh, ready to place your order. Okay, great. Um, I guess I can switch back to me. Uh, and I'll come back. Let's see. Um, another artwork related question which is a little tricky to answer when I send in my own artwork and pay to have it altered slightly can you guys send me a JPEG or a PDF of that updated artwork I've had customers ask for a PDF after they pay to have it altered by you guys um, I can field that one or you can George Ann it's okay. you um, I, the short answer to that is that we do not offer that service. Um, Transfer Express, the artwork that we create is for the purpose of creating your transfers. Um, if it's an issue where you need artwork to create other things, uh, we can help out by faxing a copy of that artwork to you perhaps. Um, there is a thumbnail of it available on our website, but we do not offer the service of sending you a JPEG after the artwork is created, unfortunately. Not, not at this time. In the future, perhaps? Yeah, uh, in the, the future, maybe. possibly. But right now, yeah, no, once we have it in-house, because we don't know, we use it in a format that we use it in-house, and getting it back to you in what specific format you need is very tricky and all that. It, maybe someday down the line, but right now, we do not. The other way to look at that question, too, is that we don't actually, the, the honest answer is we don't actually use JPEGs of your artwork anyway. Um, all of the printing that we do, we use other format artwork, so it's not that we have a JPEG sitting here that we could just easily send you anyhow. It's sort of the other way to see that. Okay, and here's another artwork one for me. If I want to use your clip art and fonts but want a unique arrangement, would that be an Easy Prints or an Easy Prints Plus? Um, those are what we call internally what we call text orders. It's, it's still, as long as you, if you send us a fax of how you want it arranged, and as long as you're still using our parts of 
of our stuff that would still be an easy print. It may be on a longer schedule because it's not based on our template design, so it may be on a three-day schedule because we basically have to put your puzzle together of build all your elements where you want them, the size you want them, and things like that. Um, but that still would be easy, easy print. If you um, go a, way, a little farther than that and you want some crazy surgery done on a clip art, take the hat off the bear and this and that, that that's when it gets to a blurred toward the easy print plus pricing. Um, but sometimes if it's simple of where you just want the, something, the number taken off the uniform or the shirt or something of a sports clip art, that could still be an easy print. But the more, more detailed work you want ma manipulated in our easy print artwork makes it push toward the easy print plus side. Okay, let's see. Um, for screen printer transfers, um, what is the turnaround time and where does it ship from? Uh, for screen printer transfers, the rule of thumb is, uh, first of all, whether or not the artwork is uh, coming from our idea book or if it's your artwork. Um, if the artwork is from our idea book, then it is between one and three days, depending on uh, what exactly it is. If it's your artwork, it is a three-day turnaround. Um, artwork, artwork out of our catalog, uh, if it's one color placed before 11 a.m. and it's under five, uh, I'm sorry, under 250 pieces, it will ship same day. If it is multicolor artwork, it goes on a two-day turnaround. And as uh, George Ann just mentioned in the example from the question she just had, if it's artwork where we're having to do some kind of crazy setup and it's involved, but it's still ours, it can go on a three-day turnaround. And uh, all of our shipments come out of beautiful Mentor, Ohio. We are east of Cleveland by about 30 minutes. Um, we do, however, I know that that question sort of transitions into a shipping question, we do offer a uh, special two-day service to all of you all out there on the West Coast. Um, no matter where you're at in the country, we can get you the uh, package within two days using our Speedy Air. Uh, make sure to ask your dealer services rep about that if you have not already. Okay, and here's a second part to that question, Andy, from Teresa. Um, and what are the advantages of doing screen printer transfers versus sending to a contract printer? Um, she, sa she says, it seems like the cost for the contract printing is less than half the price, and we want to be profitable if using screen printer transfers. Do you have any tips for her? Yeah, certainly. Uh, there's one thing that you discover in this industry very quickly is that old adage, there's more than one way to skin a cat. Uh, there certainly is in this situation. Um, uh, you're right, depending on who your contract printer is, you can find really crazy cheap prices, but then there's a lot of different problems associated with the contract printing. First of all, um, just to come up with an example off the top of my head, if you've got a sporting type event, a sporting tournament, if you're doing contract printing and you're selling at this sporting tournament, then you're going to have to have your contract printer print up a certain number of shirts. Uh, let's say, uh, just to pull a number out of the air, 100 shirts. Well, if it rains during the tournament and maybe the home team doesn't do so great, maybe you don't sell that many shirts. Maybe you sell, out of your 100 shirts, you sell only 50 of them. Well, then you've got 50 shirts that just, you're, you're just out of luck. Uh, with transfers in this type of situation, you can save your stock. You can only print however many you sell right there at the tournament. You take your heat press with you, take your transfers with you, and if you only sold 50 shirts, then you didn't waste another another 50 shirts because you didn't sell them. You can keep your blanks. Um, also, transfers do store very nicely. Um, if you have a customer that returns on a regular basis, I know restaurants are notorious for this, they uh, come back and they need 20 pieces now. And then two months later, they need another 15 pieces. And then two months later, they need another 20 pieces. Um, you can order 100 transfers and you can store those, and then when that regular customer comes in, like they do, and inevitably needs one more, or two more, or three more, you ordered 100, you've got them stored and set aside, you can come back and press them as needed. Um, so that's another fantastic opportunity. Um, but uh, uh, the, keep in mind that transfers are, are a lot more um, flexible than they used to be too, so you can store them for long periods of time. Yeah, speaking of that, that's one of our next questions in the list, Andy, is what is the normal shelf life of a plastisol transfer? How long can they be stored? Will heat and humidity affect the quality over time? 
Um, you know what, and that's a good question too. I would love to tell you that there is a number that you can put on that uh, and that you can store them for X amount of time. Um, there is no number, but the rule of thumb is that a screen printed transfer does keep uh, in a good environment. If it's an office environment, meaning that it's climate controlled, uh, because the temperature does affect it. Uh, keep in mind that heat is one of the things that makes a transfer apply. So you want to make sure that the environment you're storing them in is a cool office-like environment, so 70 some degrees. Um, humidity will also mess with the transfer, so you got to make sure it is climate controlled, so not your garage, not your basement, that sort of thing. Um, but in terms of how long they keep, uh, we had recently in our dealer services department, I had a rep asked me the same question and I made them a bet that I had a goof proof transfer under my desk that was uh, seven years old and I bet them that I could get it to work and lo and behold we took out a shirt we pressed it and the seven year old goof proof transfer did work um, as long as it's stored correctly they can last, last a good long time yep and we have a, a listener that just mentioned also he had one for over four years and it still worked great as well and I've had good experience with that too since I've been here 18 years I have boxes of transfers that I found some old ones and they still work and when you're happy to find that so as a as a side note that same thing though if you have those old transfers sometimes you do need to exaggerate the pressing just a tiny bit so if you've got goof proof instead of pressing it for the four seconds that you normally would if it's an old transfer it does doesn't hurt to give it an extra two or three seconds just to be safe. Okay. Um, actually, I have one from Mary Ellen. Um, what's the best uh, sticker product to use on an actual car? Like, uh, we, uh, a customer was asking if there, the police had loss of a police officer and they wanted to put a sticker on the outside of the car, what product would they use? Um, we actually have a few sticker products. And actually all of our products on the window sticker, the helmet sticker, and the bumper sticker are all very durable for outdoor use. The ink colors won't fade um, for at least three years. Um, e any one of those three would be fine. The only difference is the window decal comes um, with a mask on it. So if you have an image that has a lot of detail, maybe a lot of different pieces, um, for example, on the screen, if you're looking at that right now, if you look in the bottom left and you had an image that had some letters that were separate and a helmet that are separate, something like that I would get the window decal because we can put the mask on that and that helps you to apply it so you're not applying each individual little piece of the sticker. Um, otherwise, you would have to have like a shape completely encompassing your whole design. Um, but otherwise, any of those three products are all for um, outdoor use and will stand up to the elements of the weather. Okay, great. Good information. Um, here's another one. Can you apply your transfer products with an iron? <laughs> um, that's actually a question we get from time to time. Um, it would make life easier if you could, I guess, but no, no, our, our transfer products cannot apply with an iron. Um, and the reason is uh, not because we're being stingy or something. The reason is because an iron, number one, does not get hot enough. You're not going to be able to generate enough heat to activate the adhesive and to liquefy the ink. Um, but then the second part is even if your iron did get hot enough, and I've heard people say, well, I've got, I've got a really good iron. Um, even if your iron did get hot enough to liquefy the ink and activate the adhesive, you're not going to get the pressure, the proper pressure. Um, a heat press provides even pressure across the entire transfer. Um, an iron, unless you've got a teeny weeny transfer, an iron, you're not going to be able to actually push hard enough yourself with your hands. You're not going to be able to push hard enough or across the entire transfer to make that happen. So um, a couple of problems with that idea. So no, an, an iron does not work, unfortunately. Um, a question from Tom. Where am I? I lost it now. Um, when you say dealer, do you mean I am reselling transfers and or creating work for customers? I'm not exactly sure what he means by that, but maybe explain the whole dealer concept, Andy? Yeah, certainly. Um, dealer is just sort of a fun word we call our customers. The idea, the way we see it, Tom, is that if you order transfers from us, you are dealing our product. Uh, that's how we see that. Uh, to become a dealer, all you have to do is place an order with us. Um, once you have placed an order with us, you get into our system. We give you a dealer ID number. 
uh, and a password to access our website, but uh, a dealer just refers to somebody who sells our product. Okay, good. And then, yeah, and when you join us, you as a dealer, you will get on our dealer mailing list, and we send out monthly um, emails with tips and tricks, and you have access to logging in for the pricing and easy view, so you get a lot of perks once you uh, be actually make your first purchase. And the best way when you're becoming a dealer is to either call in your order over the phone and get your whole account set up, or some, there are a lot of products that can be ordered online and you can convert your uh, get converted that way. But the custom transfers is not it can't be done as your first order. But say you were ready to buy a marketing kit online, you can order that online and you get converted and become a customer. And then you get access to all the great tools on our website. Um, let's see, here's another one for, uh, from Amy. She says, I work a lot with schools and some of the designs that I have will need to change the name of the school. Customize like your company does. What does that mean for me in cost? Will I have to pay every time I change the name of the school, for example? That sort of depends on exactly what you're doing. Um, if, if you have the same logo you're using over and over again, uh, then what we can do is we can save that logo as a custom clip art, uh, meaning that you do pay custom the first time, and then you pay $15 extra, and we'll take that, whatever that custom clip art was that made the design custom, we'll take that logo and then save that as an easy print clip art for just you, so then you can take that artwork and you can change the text on it, do something else with it. A great example is when you've got the local high school uh, mascot and you've got the cheerleaders and the football team and the baseball team and the soccer team and all that stuff. I mean, it would stink if you had to pay custom pricing every time you use that same high school logo. So that's what we do is we save that as a custom clip art. We uh, shorten that. The abbreviation we use is CCA. Um, we save it as a custom clip art for you and that you can stick it in whatever layout you want, you can change the text all you like and it doesn't go to custom pricing. So useful stuff. Okay. Um, I got another one that we have this question a lot in via email is if someone's already a stalls ID customer, are they automatically a dealer with Transfer Express? Um, Automatically, no. Uh, it's not hard to become a dealer, though. Um, if you are a customer of Stalls and you happen to have a Net30 account through Stalls, that Net30 account does carry over to us. Um, but regardless, Net30 or not, if you are a Stalls customer and you call us up at Transfer Express, we do ask you just a couple questions. You don't have to sign any papers or anything like that, but we'll ask you just a few questions about yourself, and uh, we'll get you set up once you're ready to place your first order. Okay, great. Okay, here's another one for me, actually, from John. Um, with respect to the artwork for Easy Prints plus Plastisol transfers, do my art designs have to be spot color only, or can gradients and half tones be used like four color process and similar uh, simulated process print? Um, we do do some half tones, but we recommend. Um, that they be backed with another color. The dots and the paper don't like each other, basically. Um, when the dots are floating on the, the release paper, and they tend to fall off a lot just in during in the manufacturing process and in the shipping process, they shake in the bag, and while it's shipped and getting thrown around by the UPS guy, the dots tend to fall off the paper. So what we recommend is, what if you do have half tones that we add a solid color shape behind it, then it get the dots stick to the ink versus the paper, and you get a better quality print. Because nothing's worse than getting have a, having a cool gradient shading, and you got three dots missing in the middle, and it's not very nice. So we don't we can do it. We don't recommend it. Um, we don't, currently do not do four color process printing except for in our transfer extreme. Let me go back to that slide to show you. Transfer extreme is our stock transfers, which is simulated um, four color process. Um, we're just, right now we're just still in the learning phase of this, and we may this may part of our company may grow in the future. Um, each holiday we keep releasing new uh, full color designs. So right now we have a full set of Christmas designs out there. And we also have our uh, extreme essentials that you can mix together with other transfers. Um, but we currently don't do that from custom artwork, but that we may in the future. All right, what else do I have on my list here? Um, Skylar wants to know if Greek letters are copyrighted. Do you know about that one, Andy? Um, you know what? The letters themselves are not copywritten. 
but um, I do have some experience with um, some of the fraternities out there that the letters are associated with. Some of the fraternities do copyright their name, so it's not the actual letter that's copywritten, but it's the combination of letters like, um, I can't, off the top of my head, I can't think of one, but some of those super popular, super big uh, uh, fraternities and sororities especially too, the three letters that comprise their name, those three letters you can use together, that's copyright. But the actual independent alpha and beta and gamma and kappa, the individual letters, no, those are not copyright. Those can be freely used. Okay. And there's a few questions in our list there that I are not applicable to our products. We'll answer any of the other ones via email that we either do or don't know the answer to here. I'm trying to dig out some more. Um, what was the other one? Uh, I saw it. Um, Somebody was looking for recommended recommendations on t-shirt suppliers. Do you know some off the top of your head, Andy? I absolutely do. Uh, our favorite here at Transfer Express is Broder Brothers. Um, and Broder Brothers can get us in trouble. <laughs> uh, Broder Brothers is great. They have a fantastic, a fantastic selection of blank stuff. Um, a lot of our employees spend a lot of time going through Broder Brothers stuff. We, we tend to order a lot. But, um, Broder is great, uh, and it depends on what you're looking for exactly. Uh, teamwork out of California, I believe. Teamwork Athletic, uh, they do fantastic jerseys, um, just about any type of jersey, color combination jersey you could possibly think of. Um, so they're, they're great for jerseys to where Broder is better for t-shirts. Um, Broder's actually got a great supply of other stuff, promotional stuff. I know they came out with can koozies and uh, CD cases and that kind of stuff too. Um, but uh, there's a couple different jersey suppliers, though, if you're going that direction. Athletic is one. Um, High Five out of the West Coast somewhere. High Five Athletic is another one that does great, uh, great jerseys also. Okay, and the yeah, the Broder Brothers is a little tricky. I'll spell it for you because somebody's asking for it. It's B R O D E R, and then B R O S dot com is their website. Um, another recommendation from a listener here is One Stop is an awesome supplier for tees and fleece. So that's another tip for you. Yeah. Uh, okay, another question from Brandon here. What can we do if the edges of the print come up when removing the paper after pressing? If the edges of the print come up after pressing, um, first, I, the, the thing you have to consider is if the edges are coming up, there is the question of whether or not it was pressed correctly. So you got to make sure to check your time, temperature, pressure settings, make sure you do press it correctly. But if for some reason, whatever the reason is, if, if the edges do come up on a transfer, you can always uh, cover up the transfer. You take a cover sheet. We sell packs of cover sheets here at Transfer Express. Or um, a non-stick sheet you might have from stalls. Or uh, craft paper works too. The point is you, you cover up the transfer uh, with an acceptable paper. You cover it up and then you hit it again. Uh, follow the instructions. You don't don't have to go for the whole application time necessarily, but you can. So if it's a goof proof, you uh, turn your press to 365, cover up the edges of the paper, and you hit it for uh, four seconds. The catch, the big thing is you do not want the transfer that has already been pressed, you do not want it to touch the upper platen. Because if the upper platen, the heating element, touches ink that's already been pressed, you're going to create a yucky mess when it sticks to that. So when you're sticking your edges back down, just make sure to cover the whole thing and then hit it for the appropriate time. Okay, great, Andy. Uh, another uh, vendor that some of the listeners are recommending is sanmar.com, S-A-N-M-A-R.com. Two people recommended that. Uh, here's one for Mary Ellen. Uh, I saw a design on a school locker on one of your slides. What kind of product will go on school lockers, and is it permanent? Well, that picture is probably our wall graphics material. Our wall graphic material is um, repositionable. It is sticky, but it does not pull off the paint off of like a painted wall or a painted locker. Um, so you can reuse that. You can. That's why um, it's actually a great use for on lockers because I'm sure they don't want permanent stickers on there. You could use any of the other stickers I mentioned earlier, um, the helmet, the window stickers, but those are um, like 
semi-permanent to permanent sticker. So the wall graphic is really um, the route you would want to go with, and you can reposition that and reuse it multiple times if you um, save the paper that you had it on. You can put it back on there and save it and put it on another application later, and it works great for that, for that process. Okay, great. Um, here's a little question that'll be a little teaser for you guys or that you guys here will get it before some other people is, uh, the question is, does Transfer Express ever offer seasonal discount on transfers? Um, we only have one real annual sale and for instance, this customer says we only buy our sets of numbers once a year as their best time to buy these from Transfer Express. Uh, our numbers are usually on sale in the month of January, so coming up January 1st, Stock up on our numbers, they'll be 15% off, and that's our annual sale that's coming up. So, and we do have a new sneak peek. We have a new style coming out this, this uh, January. Our next webinar will be covering our new for 2013, and that'll be one of the things coming out. So let's look forward to that. We'll give you a little teaser on that. Um, what else questions do I have? I'm not sure if you can answer this one, but it was back to the craft paper question. What thickness is normal for using on a cover sheet? Like, do you know a mill reference for the craft paper, Andy? Ooh, gosh. You know what? I, I don't actually. Um, I'm not sure what the mill is. Um, uh, generally, it's, the thickness of the paper isn't really the most important thing, to be totally honest with you. Um, for example, just to give you, give you an example, if you have a goof-proof transfer, um, a, a sheet of used goof proof paper, for example, could could totally be a cover sheet as long as there's no schmutz on the paper, um, as long as there's like residual ink left over. Um, just that just a plain plain transfer paper. Our, our cover sheets are about the same thickness too. Uh, but to give you a mill, I, I don't have that unfortunately. No, I apologize. Um let's see what else do we got here. Here's a question um, from Sean. If a youth sport team uses professional team's logo just recolored, are there copyright issues? Oh, gosh. You know what? It, it, that starts to get into gray area, to be honest with you. That, that gets complicated. Um, if, if it's recolored, that certainly does help, yes. Um, and as long as it, it's not point blank, if, uh, for example, if it doesn't say point blank Cleveland Cavaliers, um, even if you recolored that, uh, instead of using the maroon and gold, if you colored it blue, for example, Cleveland Cavaliers, you still can't print regardless whether it's blue or maroon and gold, doesn't matter. Um, but if you changed the name on it, if it wasn't Cleveland Cavaliers, if it was just Cavaliers, or if it was Metro Cavaliers, or Little League, you know, uh, Lake County Little League Cavaliers, and you change the color, um, that, that begins to get more acceptable. Uh, another strategy to use is to make subtle changes to the Major League logos. Um, if you make some subtle changes to the artwork, then you really you, you make it less of a chance of getting yourself in trouble with copyright laws. And keep in mind that's the whole reason we do this. We we don't we don't observe the copyright laws just to make life difficult. It's it's to help protect you guys and to help protect ourselves as well. Um, making some subtle changes to the artwork, and if it's if they're subtle enough, it's stuff that the end user doesn't even necessarily notice too. So, um, I know one of the favorites, uh, Philadelphia Eagles, you to take the Philadelphia Eagles and um, uh, make the Eagles beak less bent, and to get rid of some of the feathers off his neck, and that kind of stuff. So, in the end, it's subtle changes that you don't necessarily notice, but um, that will help uh, lessen the chances of there being issues as well. Okay, we're getting close to the end here. I got a couple more left. We'll try to squeeze them in here. How does glow in the dark ink compare to the former reflective ink offering from Dennis? Um, the it's sort of a, a two totally different breeds of animal. The reflective ink was uh, little, very tiny microscopic glass beads mis mixed with silver to give you a reflective quality. Uh, and what it would do was bounce light back at you to where the glow-in-the-dark product, uh, it will absorb light uh, for, I believe the way it works, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Georgianne, but uh, for every two hours that it sets under regular light, uh, whether it's uh, outdoor light or indoor light, doesn't matter, for every two hours it sets under indoor light, it will then glow in the dark for one hour. Um, so it's not actually reflecting light back at you, it's glowing uh, as opposed to the reflective that will reflect it back at you. Okay. Um, let's see, okay, then 
they want to know if the the samples yet will include the glow in the dark as a uh, reflective. We have discontinued. We no longer carry the reflective, but glow in the dark does come in the sample kit. Um, let's see. Uh, another question from somebody saying, I'm looking into buying a heat press to add to my embroidery business, but I don't know what kind is going to be the best choice for me. Can you steer me in the right direction? I certainly can. Um, the The way to look at it is you first need to figure out how much money you want to spend. Um, and that's that's sort of the obvious answer. But we have two lines of presses. We have the Hotronics line, and then we have the Hotronics Max line. Um, the Hotronics presses, the silver presses, they are a little bit more pricey. They have all the bells and whistles, all the really great features that make them uh, the fantastic Cadillac of presses that they are. The Max line does not have all the bells and whistles, but they're still the reliable machines with the great warranties. They're a little bit more cost effective. So the question is, are you looking to spend closer to six or seven hundred bucks, or are you looking to spend closer to a thousand dollars? So, um, and then which which features are the ones that you're looking for? If you're not looking for the crazy advanced features, then it's would seem to me, especially if you're adding a press to a business and you might not know how much you're going to use that press, then maybe you should go closer towards the max presses. Okay, thanks, Andy. That's great. Um, one last one probably here, and then I'll give a quick summary of things that are going on is, um, if I'm just getting into creating my own artwork, what graphic software would you recommend? Um, Personally, uh, we like Corel Draw here. We we use it for a lot of things. Um, it seems to have an easier learning curve. I personally call Illustrator Frustrator myself, um, and I've been in this industry for a long, long time, and still like to bark at the screen when I can't get it to do what I want it to do. But Corel and the the downfall of Corel is they don't have a lot of tutorials out there online and stuff. There is some resources. Um, there's a site called Unleash.com that uh, Foster Coburn is a guy that runs that site and has a whole Unleashed training that's a good start, that gives you the basics and things like that. Um, and CorelDRAW X6 is the latest version, um, and it's a, it's a, can, is easy, pretty easy to learn. It takes a little bit of time, but you can use it for your cutters and things as well and things like that. Uh, any other so tips you want, you want to give Andy or Mary Ellen? I was going to say, to throw in my own two cents on that question, if uh, I, as a customer service rep, if I can learn Corel, then anybody can learn Corel. <laughs> <laughs> um, just on the digital side, I um, would recommend Photoshop for the full color artwork. We can actually use any type of artwork for the digital process, but um, if you are using Photoshop, we can definitely use those files for like photographic qualities or photorealistic qualities and reproduce those, um, you know, as is in all those digital CAD prints products and the, you know, non-apparel like the window and the stickers and all those types of things. So that's another program um, more for the digital type of things that we can accept and recommend. All right, well, it's about 2.48 now, so we'll wrap it up here. I just want to, people have been asking about the samples. Um, we have all your information from when you signed up for the webinar. We'll make sure everyone gets our, our normal little sample pack, and it comes with a catalog and the price guide and all that. We'll get the, you should get those within two weeks. They'll come via postal mail, and try those out with your heat press, and we're always available to answer questions on our inbox on the slide here at info at Transfer Express. We have tons of videos on our website. Um, our blog is a great resource for looking up tips and tricks and things like that and subscribe to it because so, we write a blog every week with little tips that you might not know. And don't hesitate to call us. Andy and his team will can answer just about any question you want. And if uh, you did, your questions didn't get answered in the list today, it either we weren't sure what the question was, or we'll answer it via email, or it was not relating to our company, but we'll definitely get back to you one way or other. I mean, we thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Mary Ellen. Thanks, Andy, for great participation here, and hopefully people got a lot out of it today. Thank you. Thanks, Have a good day, everybody. Have a great day.